Hi guys, welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartooning. Today we're going to be exploring another modern Stone Age character from Hanna-Barbera, Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman is a Hanna-Barbera produced animated character that was popular in the 1970s and 80s. The character was created by Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, the same creative team behind Scooby-Doo. The show, Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, featured the superhero of Captain Caveman, a literal thawed-out caveman with super strength, who with his friends, Dee Dee, Brenda, and Taffy, the Teen Angels, fight crime and solve mysteries. The show was meant to be a parody of the popular 70s action show Charlie's Angels, but it also borrowed elements from the Flintstones, with a lot of caveman prehistoric jokes, as well as its sister show Scooby-Doo, with elements of mystery. The character design of Captain Caveman is very simple. He is basically a pear shape, covered in hair, with arms, legs, and a face. The idea of his body, covered in long hair, was so he could hide his crime-fighting tools he needed for every episode within his massive beard. This simple character design will help us when it comes time to draw Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels ran from 1977 to 1980, with additional appearances on several spin-off shows like The Flintstones Comedy Show, Hanna-Barbera's Laugh Olympics, and what I remember most, Captain Caveman and Son, that was part of the Flintstone Kids cartoon from the 1980s. He even made a recent appearance in the new animated film, Scoob. Okay, let's get started with Captain Caveman. Uh, make sure you have your paper, a pencil that you like, your permanent marker, and then whatever colors you're gonna need later on. We'll just put those off to the side for now, and let's take a look at our reference photo. If we take a look at the reference photo, we can see that Captain Caveman is basically, he's basically a pear shape. Um, a pear covered with hair. And the only things that you see of him are his arms and his legs. And then just his eyes and his nose are visible of his face. And then just this giant mouth. Um, but the, the, the character design is going to be relatively simple. It's just that um, pear shape. So let's get started. We're going to do some foundational shapes first. Uh, and we're going to do just like our pear shape here. Remember, a light touch with your pencil at first, just in case we need to make some adjustments. There. <laughs> we drew a pear. All right. We can put in our face lines, that'll help. Uh, and his eyes are going to be right up here, so we're going to do a horizontal face line right there. And then the body's going to follow this vertical face line. All right. He is going to have an arm coming out this way. But it's going to come right back in sort of like a triangular shaped hand which right now again we're putting in the basic shapes we're putting in lines where the hands are going to be and the arms are going to be and then we're going to um, put in all that extra detail later so it's gonna have one arm that's going straight up and he's gonna be pointing all right one foot is gonna be coming out this way and it's going to have, he has these enormous feet. Look at the reference photo. He has these enormous feet. Um, very exaggerated. We're just putting in the basic foot shape right now. We'll do individual toes and everything later. And then the other foot is going to be coming out this way. It's going to be bent. There's just a little shape for the foot right now. He's got his club, which is sort of like a big wooden baseball bat. And it's misshapen, so it's not perfect. Kind of goes up and... Um, Hanna-Barbera characters have this almost angular look to their, or, or an angular exaggeration to their characters. Even the way his hair just springs out from his head, it's in these very weird misshapen um, lines. 
and this stylized look of wood on Captain Caveman's club. We definitely, uh, that's a very Hanna-Barbera thing. Um, okay, we got the club in there. Let's start working on some of his face. Uh, it's very simply one eye there and one eye there. And then if we look at the reference photo, we notice that his nose is so big that it's cutting off the bottom of this eye right here. So when we draw the nose in, it's going to go right about here. It's going to cut off the bottom of that nose and it's going to go right off the edge. So he's got this big balloon shaped nose that later on we're going to erase everything that is underneath it as if it's behind it. All right, and he's got this wide smile, almost crooked, and hairy, because all he is is hair. In a lot of ways, if you guys are familiar with the Adams family, he's a lot like Cousin It, except he has a face. But that's another show. Okay, he has this humongous mouth. All right, this is all going to be mouth. All right, we could put the little suggestion of the tongue in there, but we can shade in what we're going to be inking later on. All right, he's going to have a pupil here and a pupil here. Almost looks like he's a little cross-eyed. Right. Um. He has one eyebrow coming up this way and then one that's inside on top of that eye. But now we're going to start putting in some of the texture of the hair. Let's, one more time, take a look at that reference photo. And all you need to do to do the hair is just a couple of zigzags. One, two, three. And then there's a bunch of zigzags down here. We'll add in some lines for texture. But that's basically all you have to do for his big bundle of hair. Just a couple of zigzags. This is going to be behind the club, so we don't have to worry about that. We also have to make sure that we put in his cape later on. So let's just put a line right there and a line right here. That's going to indicate where his cape is going to spring off from. Uh, but we can continue with the hair here. Just zigzaggy shapes. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, you want it to look imperfect because he is imperfect. All he is is a big ball of hair. Okay. Got that in. Let's work on his arms. Uh, let's do this one first. This will be the easiest one because it's just going straight up. So all we have to do is just thicken that line that we drew going up into the thumb. All right, going right into a pointer finger. All right, and then a finger bending over. It actually just looks like a little letter C. And then an oval. Now that is indicating a finger that's completely bent over. Going right into the arm and back down into the body. We'll f clean up those lines later on. He also has a little suggestion of a palm of the hand right there. All right. Now let's do this hand. One, two fingers. This third finger is going to be bent over and then goes right into the palm of the hand, which goes right back into the arm. And then back towards the body. All right, so we see the top of the hand here, and then we're gonna have a line like that, going right back towards the elbow, as if we have a bend in the arm going towards the body. Let's spend a little bit of time on the club. We're going to put in those stylized wood lines. Take one more time, take a look at this. Just a couple of lines indicating that this is just hewn out of wood. Well, 
looks good. All right, let's work on this foot. We're gonna do the the, feet, the arms and the feet, and then we'll work on the rest of the uh, texture for the hair, and then the little hairs that are springing out the top of his head. Let's get this foot done. So right out from the side of the body, and then right up into a toe. All right, that toe is gonna be basis for the other toes. But before we do the other toes, we're going to do the ball of the foot here into his arch and his heel. And then this will go right back in towards the body. And we're going to put this little ankle bone right there. All right. And now all we have to do is one, two, three little toes. All right. And then he's got another little ball of his foot right there. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to this one. Uh, we have a knee going up first. And then this part of his foot, or I guess maybe his ankle, goes into this part of his foot. And then out. It's interesting to see sometimes how the artists decipher, you know, uh, an exaggerated body type. And he's definitely exaggerated. You don't come across people who are just giant balls of hair, pear-shaped balls of hair, with comically oversized feet. So it's interesting to see how they put it all together. And again, we'll clean up those lines later on. Oh, we might want to just put in that little suggestion of, and we'll do it on this one too, of the uh, toenail. Just a little half rectangle. There and there. Okay. Let's do the cape behind him. He's got sort of like a leopard print cape. So it's going to be coming out from the club here, doing a little line going out creating almost as if it was a wave. All right, and then we can bring it back here. And let's have it cut off the top of his arm here. Let's erase that line. So it actually looks like it is on top of his arm. And then there's the part behind it. And it's sort of like, again, he's a, he's a caveman, so it's gonna be kind of jagged. There's one. This one's completely behind this arm, so this arm is fine. Cut a little notch in there. All right. And then we could put in some of the dots, because he's got sort of like a leopard print, so just throw in some spots in there, as if it was the pelt of some sort of prehistoric animal. Okay. Right, and now let's put in some of those Hairs. Now, they look sort of like wires, like almost these wiry hairs coming out of his, um, his face, or like whiskers, like cat whiskers, but they're, they're all like wiry and angled. He's got a couple here and down here as well, so let's start putting some of those on. i got one here. And they can be as wild as you want them to be. And then he's got like three coming out on either side. One, two, three. One, two, three. There there and then we could put in some lines just again just some lines um, giving him some texture and 
and we'll be able to ink some of these in later on so we don't put them in all now that is fine all right let's start inking uh, we're going to start with the nose first. The nose is going to uh, cut off part of the, the eye that's turning away from you. So do that one first. Get it out of the way. Where we had a light touch with the pencil, remember with your inking marker, you want to do it as smooth as possible. Right, he's got sort of like a thickened eye on one side so once you ink it first go back around with the eye on the one side and give it make it a little bit darker then you can go ahead and do that eye all right let's do his eyebrow and the other one right here and we're going to go right into his mouth so he's going to have sort of like a a little check mark right there that's where his mouth is going to begin, at least the top lip. And uh, make sure you keep that jagged line in there because he, again, covered with hair, you want him to look hairy. He's got this humongous mouth and a tongue. And then you can ink all of that. Let's do this part, the, the jagged hair going around the top of the head. Stop before you get to the club because the club is going to cut that off. And there's some little jagged pieces right there. Let's do this arm, get that out of the way. do this arm as well. All right, it's we wanted to get that one done so that we can finish up the club. Finish up the hairy body now. And we can do this foot. thing about Hanna-Barbera characters is to make sure you have line confidence. Again, that comes with time. Um, line confidence is being able to quickly but effectively ink your character. And that comes to, uh, to an artist when they really know their character or when they've drawn them enough or if they just have enough experience. So line confidence is going to come. Um, an example of line confidence is how I did that little uh, flick of the wrist so that the ink uh, kind of tapers as you let the pressure of the pen go. Again, that's going to come with time. Right. And 
you could do each individual little spot on his cape. coming out of the top of his head and the sides of his face and the sides of his body. I'll give him a couple more little lines for texture but that's essentially it. All right, we have our inking done. So let's take some time and erase our original pencil lines. As is usually the case when I erase my original pencil lines, I notice a line that I didn't ink, and that would be his toenails here and here. All right, so now comes time for color. Um, let's begin with his, uh, his skin tone. And the skin that is visible on him is his nose, his arms, and his legs. So I'm just going to use a regular skin tone color here. And again, what's good about the permanent marker is that you can color right over it. Once you lay down your permanent marker and you just give it a couple of literally seconds to dry, it doesn't smudge. You can't do this with a Crayola marker, only a permanent marker. Now we're going to use a light brown to do the um, hair. Make sure that when you're choosing your colors that you have a light brown and a dark brown. You're going to need a dark brown for the club. If we take a look at the reference photo. He's got light brown hair, but he's got a dark brown, almost reddish brown club. Just make sure you have those two colors.
let's do the darker brown for the club. He's got orange for the cape. And then the last little bit is some pink for the tongue. And there we have it. Captain Caveman.